And uh, first off, I want to thank uh, Janine and Ray. Is Ray still here? There he is. Ray, my idol for so long. Uh, just, this is to me a great moment to be just be able to talk at the Psychic Entertainers Association. There too. And, you know, we had so much fun and those years were just great. And then later, when I got more involved with skeptics, I found out that he was in the Skeptic Society. I said, wow, I, this is something I need to look into. So I've never looked back, and uh, I read all of his readings, especially on cold reading and hot reading, which is what my book, uh, Psychic Blues, is about. It's all a trick. There are no real psychics or mediums, and if there are, our world would be a terrifyingly horrible place to live. You think it's bad now? Imagine that people could walk around and hear your thoughts. But anyway, <laughs> that's my introduction. I am a thought reader. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking he can't possibly read my thoughts. That's impossible. Nobody can do that. It would be a terrifying world, blah, blah, blah. But if we work together as a team, kind of my corporate uh, angle here, if we work as a team, we will make amazing things happen. I guarantee that's going to happen. So <clears throat> in my opening address, I just want to give you a few examples of what I do and what psychics do or people who say they're psychics do. Because it's compelling. I've loved it ever since I was a teenager when I first did magic, and then I heard about mentalism, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. This must be real. Fast forward, no, it's just a little trick. So I'm going to be looking at your thoughts. But before I look at your thoughts, I'm going to try, try and send you one of my thoughts. So I want you to everybody take a deep cleansing breath. Relax. I want to see your shoulders go back. Don't worry about me reading your thoughts. It's impossible. How could I possibly? But I will send you one. Listen carefully. I am thinking of a number from 0 to 50. Both of the digits are different, and both of the digits are odd. I'm going to send it to you right now. How many people raise your hands immediately saw the number 37? Raise your hands. 35 over here somewhere? 35 over here? That's good. That's not, again, not a great, not a great showing, but a good way to activate the group. And with skeptics, works. So, so you thought of the number 35. That's really interesting. Um, do you play Montrose? Well, I can't think when it's over a billion. <laughs> well, you see, it, it only takes a billion to make, to make somebody try it, didn't we all? So, so I'm going to try something that has to do with numbers because a lot of us, if you're in the science area, you know that we believe that, not we, some people believe that everything is made out of numbers. You know, mathematics, I was never good at mathematics, but I appreciate that numbers can do things and make things happen. So I knew I was going to trip over that thing. I have in this envelope, this is a sealed envelope. I have, you can see inside there, there is a piece of paper. I wrote something down before I even left home, and I sealed it inside of this envelope. So we're going to try a little experiment to see if somebody could actually predict the future. You know, it's one thing you go to a psychic and they say, well, I see that in two years you're going to buy a boat or whatever. You know, no one's ever really around to check out whether that really happens, you forget about it. Or if it's a hit, then the psychic will cash in on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. To me, the real test is to predict something that's going to happen, say, in the next two or three minutes. Right? In front of all these witnesses. So, you, sir, point to a random person in the crowd. Anybody who wanted to be your choice. Can I know? No, you don't have to know them. You, sir. Okay. Your name is? John. That is correct, John. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to lighten the mood a little bit. John, 
If I asked you to think of a number between 1 and 10, and I had written it down and sealed it in that envelope, would you be impressed? Okay. See, now this is unusual for a skeptic. 1 in 10 is like, eh, that's okay. Some people might think of 3 or 7, but the odds are, it's okay. So John, you point this one right now, anyone you want. Pointing is okay in my show. Gentlemen right here, how are you, sir? And your name is? Hello? So, if I asked you to think of a number between 1 and 100, and it was sealed inside this envelope, would you be impressed? Yes. I would be, that's a little better. But I'm going to ask you to point to one last third person, anybody you want. Go ahead, right now. He's still looking. Janine, I want you to, well, let me put it this way. If I was to ask you to think of a number between one and a thousand, and I had sealed it in that envelope, Janine, would you be impressed? Yeah. I would be. That's pretty amazing. I mean, one in a thousand. Well, what are the odds? One in a thousand. So, Janine, I want you to go ahead and think of that number right now. Have you got it? Mm -hmm. And you thought of it right away. You didn't change it, did you? Let's give, bring, have her come on up with a round of applause. Thank you. So, very sharp mind. You don't drink, do you? So, and never mind. I can't get all of these things right. I'm only saying that because... I was all about here. Yeah, okay. That's my catchphrase. You went, you went right to the number, though. Just you saw it like a neon sign. So, we have all these witnesses here. Janine, what was the number you saw? You want me to say yeah, go ahead, go ahead. 76? 76. Now, I always like to ask the audience, did anyone else think of the number 76? Let's look around and you can have a look. You see anybody looking at it, Janine? I don't. Any particular reason why you chose the number 76? It was the first one that jumped in my head. It was the first one that jumped into your head. Come on over here a little closer. Influence. No, no, what? Yeah. Here's, I'm going to try something with you. This is good for the skeptics. At the end of this, you'll be able to decide for yourselves whether I influenced her mind or I predicted the future. Time travel. It's kind of up to you. So here we go. Are you ready? 76. I'm going to pull that envelope right on your hand like that. 76. I'm going to just stay with that. I believe that I am correct. I'm going to share the envelope open. Down inside the envelope, you will see a card inside there. Would you go ahead and pull that out? Mm -hmm. And read what it says on the card. So, information is really important to me. So, I'm going to try something with information with pictures because our minds see things in pictures. If you're going to remodel your kitchen, you see it. You see a picture of it. You don't just see numbers or words like lumber. You see a picture. 
So I have a copy of, uh, this is Esquire magazine. This is the Jason Momoa issue. You know who he is, don't you? Ooh, all the ladies who went, yeah. Aquaman! <laughs> anyway, here he is with his black cat, which tells you a lot about him. The reason why I use Esquire is it has tons of pictures. Look at these. I mean, there's pictures from all over the place. There are uh, advertisements, there are shoes, there are cars. Uh, Esquire is great for this, and it's a good mix. It's a cultural demographic that shows us the kind of things people are buying and they're thinking about. So, I have selected one person out of the audience, and I believe her name is Trish. This is Trish right here. Come on up here, Trish. No, now, I'm not going to lie to you. We did plan something. He okay. something. I have no idea what I'm doing. She has no idea what's going to happen, but I plan something, and in the psychic world, this is called planning something. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to play it the way a mentalist would play it, which is we're just going to just sort of go with the flow and see what happens. So I need to test your mind first, okay? So do we ask why? Not usually. Not usually. Well, you, you know what it looks like. Right, right. yeah. yeah. So, here's what you're going to do. You're going to hold your right or left hand. Right hand. You're going to hold this in the yeah, hold this in your left hand. Cradle your hand just a little so that you can, because you're going to feel the edge here with these other fingers. Okay. And in a second, I'm going to have you, because this is just a test to see if the next thing we do is going to work out well. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around, and when I say now, I want you to. Kind of ripple your fingers anywhere you want. Open the magazine. Look at whatever picture or image, and we'll hope there is one. If there isn't, we'll have to do it again. Open it up. Look at the page at the right. Remember what it is, then close the magazine. Really quick, okay? Okay, you ready? I am. Go now. You got it? Yes. All right. Just set the magazine down there. Now comes the fun part. Don't be afraid. <laughs> this is really good for you. This will recharge your mind. It will make, your, make the whole rest of your, your week perfect. So right away I'm getting, I'm getting, you did see a good clear picture, didn't you? I was working on the number, the page number. Oh no, but I didn't ask you to remember the page number. I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. And I thought, oh, he said page number two. I would like, oh, say so I looked at the other side to see what the page number was, and they calculated. All right, all right. Right. You totally blew it. Calculating? Yeah. I added one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't count on this. Anyway, here. Skeptics. Okay. This time we're going to do it really fast. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. No number. Pitch sure. Okay. okay. One, two, three, go. Okay. Got one? Yes. You looked right at it? I did. You're thinking of it right now? I am. Did I have to do it with metal and glass? Yes. Oh. What? Oh. 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 You see this stuff every day? It works. <laughs> 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 okay. Let's see if we can go a little further. Let's see. Okay. Oh, no. television when you see somebody who seems to know things or you call somebody and you get a reading and they've looked you up on Facebook or Instagram or whatever they know what you're thinking but this is old school what we did outside is definitely old school what we did we took I guess I should do those fun things first Let me see what I'm just a few of the old school things, okay? I'm sure you've seen some of these before, and you'll use them. Okay, let's see what happens here. Oh, 
Um, gentleman in the green t-shirt, is there any way I could know your grandmother's maiden name? No? Correct, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> this old stuff. Here, here's one that I'm not going to show you how it works, but if you think about it and use your skeptic minds, you will be hopefully quite amazed. This lady right here. Did we ever meet? You have no idea who I am or what's going on. Perfect. I want you to think of your telephone number. Don't forget the area code. Damn, it's a long one. It is, isn't it? So, no idea way I could know that, right? Could you stand up behind me just for a moment? Tell everybody nice and loud what I wrote down on the pad. My telephone, yeah, my telephone number. Right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a charm. All right. But now on to the, uh, the real test. So what we did, we went outside. I gave Trish a piece of paper like this. She put it on the front of the pad. We didn't use the paper to bleed through or anything like that. You had the top of it. We separated ourselves by about 50 feet. We made sure there's no reflective surfaces anywhere, and we were pretty, pretty careful on that. I went out to the tree that's over here. I stood with my back to her. I told her, when I count to three, you hold up the pad. Hold it straight out like this. That way, even if I had a way to see it, I would not see the top of the pen, which is one old mediumistic method. Hold it straight on. Go straight on to the paper. Draw. Any sort of shape you want. It can be two geometric shapes inside of the other. I don't care. Whatever you want. Draw it. Fold. Take a piece of paper off. Fold it in half. Fold it in half again. Put it in your purse. And there it is. And you haven't shown it or talked about it to anybody. Go let me see it yet. No, no, no. I might glimpse something. Oh, okay. So she now has an image in her mind. And is there any way in the world anyone could know it? No. There it is, but I'm not telling, so. <laughs> so, so. So here's what we do is I am going to try and duplicate that line. So what I'm going to do is have you stand right here with your back to me. Okay. Yes. And I want you to take the picture out okay. and unfold it. Don't let anybody see this the image on the center. And place a drawing towards yourself on your chest. Go ahead and rub that ink in there. It's, really <laughs> Just it's a new blouse. It's what? It's a new blouse. Oh, well, don't worry. All right, I need contact, so back up. Okay. So important in the work I do. <laughs> Are you thinking of the image? Yes. What month were you born? April. Around the 19th? No. Okay. Thanks for helping out. <laughs> I think I got something here that might work. I was actually getting something else to I'm just going to sketch it down in the corner. I don't know what that is, but I'll put it next to it. Doesn't seem right. Okay, now turn this way. Okay. Miracle of miracles. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Stand right back here. I don't know if you were going to review it. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> oh there were little hearts in there. It's a dozen clover. A clover. See, I saw something else, but I saw four, four sides. Woo! I only have time to do three. <laughs> <laughs> science, correct, right? I mean, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Give her a, a, a round. Of <laughs> so I hope I've given you some things to think about. Uh, you've given me some things to think about. I am only here as the opening act for my lovely friend Susan Gerbeck. <laughs>